Look at hey, the Rick. Hoodie, hoodie setup he's got. What's up, fellas? Hey, so Hello, good Rick. to see you, Rick. What's going on? So good hoity to have you. Hoity twitty, huh? Yeah, hoity <laughs> twitty. I said it. I said it. Hey, and listen, when you going to update your uh, your your portraits from 1983? Maybe do some new ones. <laughs> no, nah, I'm kidding. You look great. He looks so young. Every time I see him, honestly, every time I see him, and it must be something about Texas. I don't know. But every time I see Rick, he looks young. Now, bear in mind, he has a beautiful <laughs> wife named Kara, who is amazing. And his children, I hope I don't get choked up talking about his kids. I adore his children. When I saw photos of them now, oh my gosh, <laughs> it got me. It took my breath away. I just couldn't believe it because, you know, I got to see him as young kids, you know, and uh, amazing, 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 amazing. The secret is the whiskey. I'm just telling you. It's, uh, it's a special whiskey. Yeah, good to know. It's a special uh, whiskey. Right. I'm going to try yeah. to get some of that. Yeah, Garrison Brothers is uh, right between us and the campus, so it keeps me sane. Uh, no, I'm kidding, man. No. Hey, yeah. you know what? I was just thinking about you yesterday. I was sitting at a uh, in, in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and I met this uh, this guy that went to the Naval Academy. Do you remember taking my oldest son, Trey, and me on the tour of the Naval Academy all those years ago? I do. Ago? Yeah, yeah, we got oh, a private yeah. tour of the Naval Academy for you. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. Pays to know people, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I can't so, read your hat. What, what's your hat say? It says Sea Hag. Sea Hag Marina in uh -huh. Steenhatchee, Florida. Yeah. Uh, one of my dearest friends, um, she and her husband, Charlie, they founded and owned St uh, Sea Hag Marina in Steenhatchee, and they... Um, it's an amazing place. It's like a, it is a resort. They have places to stay. They have boat rentals. They have, um, charters. It, it, it's a humongous store, uh, a bar, a tiki bar. Uh, cool. it's, it's a, it's an amazing place and you'd never yeah. guess, but it's huge. So I, they, she sends me some swag every now and then and I wear it. Nice. Nice. Hey, if I, had right. some Patriot, if I had some Patriot Academy swag, I'd Well, as soon too. as you said that, I, I made a middle note. I made a middle there note. There you go. Miss K. Miss K will have a... Miss K will get a message. Hey, I need a, I need a Patriot... I need a Patriot uh, wife beater. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I don't think they have them. I'm not sure they have them. We'll have to have one so, made just for you guys. Yeah, I so would let me, Rick, let me introduce you. This is Watchful um, with the cap on and the long beard. Um, that's watchful. Nice to meet you, Rick. And, What's up, and, man? And then uh, you'll see with the hat turned around backwards, um, looking studly as always, <laughs> my dear friend. And uh, he's been like a little brother to me for many, many years, since he was little. And I, I love his family. And it's Christopher Brock, world-renowned photographer, um, literally one of the top photographers in the world, and doing amazing things. And Watchful's doing amazing things. And so we're just excited to have you on here. Now, Listen, if you're a listener, let me just tell you a little bit about. Now, I will tell you this right off the top. Um, I know Rick prefers the short bio. I know that he does. <laughs> but here's the bottom line: even his long John's bio. About to make up a lot of stuff. I'm just telling, warning y'all. He's gonna. This is all made up. He's gonna. Oh no! I was there for yeah. a lot of it. It's the truth. Let me say this: <laughs> Rick, uh, Rick's bio and his CV. I'm going to tell you something. The guy. He was born awesome and gaining ground ever since. <laughs> and so we became dear friends. Wow. Um, Rick is known as America's Constitution Coach. And he is a former Texas State Representative, national speaker. And when I say national speaker, let me tell you something. His whole family, when I can remember even Rhett, uh, when he was little, they would get up in front of thousands of people and blow their minds so this is this is what kind of kid kid um and he's got four of the most amazing kids i've ever seen in my life um he and kara have done an amazing job so he and his family they travel the nation they bring america's forgotten history and heroes to life and it's fun it's entertaining um it's it's just exciting and, and what it emphasizes is our moral and constitutional heritage now you if you tuned in here because you saw that Rick was going to be on, you know he co-hosts a smash hit national daily radio program, Wall Builders Live, with David Barton, who my bookshelf 
is full of David Barton stuff. Um, original Intent, I would encourage you, if you ever buy a book, you want to learn about the founders. Original Intent's a great place to start. Just absolutely unbelievable. And here's what else. Um, Rick, as you can see by his studly Texasness, he, uh, his family produced Chasing American Legends. And that's an entertaining reality show where another dear friend of mine, did I introduce you to Brad? Did I introduce Brad to you or no? No, no. He, he Brad found us. Uh, man, I knew I knew Brad a couple years before we met. But um, oh no, kidding! But he's great. Have you had him on? You need to have him I on. Ha this show. I, yep. Hey, listen, I haven't had him on yet because our lawyers don't have the disclaimer <laughs> all finished yet for Brad. But Brad Stein. <laughs> Every time we do a live show, I'm like like a, a comedy constitution on stage. When he's on stage, I'm at the back of the room or backstage, just waiting, praying to say something that's going to oh, get yeah. us all in trouble. Yeah. 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 He's been on my other show, but he's not been on he's not been on this one. And so the Green family, um, they investigate the history of our country and they unravel the mysteries. And this American story is so much better than people even know because they're not being taught that. You know what else, too? Rick is the author and executive producer of Constitution Alive. What a great name. Love that when name. You came up with the name. Come on. Let's tell the truth now, Sean. <laughs> America's. I was, doing, I was doing this Constitution class all over the country, and the, and the class is pretty entertaining. I will say I hate boring history, but my marketing needed a little help. And Sean brings me out to Delaware and has this flyer that just rocked it. I mean, it was awesome. And I stole it, and, and I've used it ever since. Like, hey, I can't that? take the I can't take the credit. Uh, Jerry and Bryn, uh, well, Bryn Sellers, Jerry Summers, God rest his soul, um, he is passed. Uh, but uh, he and Bryn came up with that, and so we were kicking around names, and I said Constitution Live, and boom. So hmm. it's uh, it is honestly the most engaging and entertaining study of the United States Constitution, as well as, and this is the important part biblical citizenship in modern America, biblical instruction for a free people. Now, I mentioned hmm. Kara. Rick is the founder. He he married way up. Um, Rick is the founder of the Patriot Academy. And listen, if you unless you're under a rock, you've heard of the Patriot Academy. It's an amazing, amazing leadership training. It's elite at a very elite level leadership training. Um, it's a program that specializes in applied civics with biblical, historical, and constitutional foundation. And through their more than 15,000 constitution coaches, they're training and empowering adults across the nation to educate their communities about the constitution. And I want to say, listen, I could go on and on, but we'd be done with the show. And uh, well, we don't they need that. to need to educate the leaders of our country is what they need to do. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah. Amen to that. And we're getting some, I've got, I've got about a dozen members of Congress now that, that have been through one of our programs and about, I don't know, we probably got a 150 state reps and senators across the country. And then, um, hundreds of school board members and city council. but guys, that's a drop in the bucket. I mean, you've got, I, I think 10,000 is the is the tipping point. We need 10,000 candidates out there that have been trained well in the Constitution. Hmm. So we got a long way to go, but we're For chipping sure. away at it. For sure. Wow. So so the world is on fire. The, we're, we're on fire. There's, this, this country is on fire. And no one seems, well, maybe a few notice that the country is on fire, but you are leading the charge. You and your team are leading the charge. And I have to say, uh, doing an amazing job. So what's Thanks. going on? What's on your heart that is just such a massive burden that you just feel like, hey, people need to hear this? Well, to be honest, Sean, it's bittersweet. I, I, I'm, I'm, um, you know me, I'm an optimist. I'm, 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 used, I'm always going to see the silver lining and uh, despite the destruction and the and the Marxism that has uh, infiltrated the entire country, despite the fact that the left owns every major institution in America, from education to every political institution to half the pulpits or more, and uh, all of the all of the rest, despite all of that, um, I really think we have a massive opportunity here. The window is open for us to convert millions of of Americans that have been 
they've been enjoying the blessings of liberty. They're not evil. They're not on the on the wrong side. They've just been on the sideline because they just, you know, frankly enjoyed the fruit of uh, of the labor of previous generations. We're on the fumes of the sacrifice of previous generations. We have a window of opportunity to wake those people up and, and get them to the principles of liberty. I, I just think we have to we have to strike now. I mean, it's um, yeah, you guys know you probably talked about this a bunch, but we've all seen the cycle, right? Or talked about the cycle of of tough times make tough men, tough men make soft, you know, for good times, good times make for soft men, soft men make for, for tough times. And we're just now entering the tough times, as you yeah. know well, get a whole lot worse. But what I'm seeing is millions of people waking up from just, just a little bit of pain, man. This is just, we're just dipping our toe in the pool, but there's enough pain now from the bad policy decisions of the Marxists that people are going, whoa, there's got to be a better way. I mean, people that don't, may not share my faith or, or, or any of those things, but they're going, wait, we're going to carve up kids. We're going to, we're going to take a 12 year old and cut off her breast. Are you kidding me? What, what is going on yeah. in the country right now? And so they're actually awake, but we have to come in with truth at this point because the Petri dish where bad government grows is civic ignorance. And when you allow that ignorance to grow into a virus, like what we've seen, it spreads like wildfire. And the immune booster, the the, the 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 solution for that is civic literacy. You have to show people truth, shake them out of their slumber, show them that there is a better way, that the American formula is the best the world has ever known. Flawed, absolutely made, you know, this nation was created by humans. So therefore, it was created by flawed men and women. Uh, but despite that, the best the world has ever known. And and if, if people are wondering whether this system is worth saving, I always ask a very simple country boy test because I'm just a simple country boy. Uh, are people trying to get in? Or are they trying to get out? And and that should tell you right there whether or not this is a great nation. Nobody's digging tunnels to get out of this country. They're digging exactly. tunnels because the American dream is what everybody wants. And we're about to yeah. lose it because of our lack of attention to the to the principles that actually produce the American dream. Well said. Yeah. So what's what's the antidote? I know the Patriot Academy is near and dear to you. It has grown immensely from when it started. I've got to see it in its relatively uh, the early times. My yeah. son Doyle uh, attended several sessions and he loved it and, and it was powerful. I mean, I've been to graduations and well, I don't, you, you don't call them graduations, right? What do you call them? I want to call them the right thing. Well, we, we, we do have, an, have a graduation, uh, but we also, the, the part that I like is the, is the torch passing. I mean, it, we're, we're yes. actually called the Torch of Freedom Foundation. And so yeah. we have hmm. a ceremonial passing the torch from guys like you that put it all on the line, willing to die for freedom, standing in front of that kid that's 19, 20, 21 years old saying, hey, I was willing to die for your freedom. Now it's time for you to go live it and really challenge them to make the most of their freedom and not just be a spoiled American brat, but actually go out there and live this thing. Doesn't mean they have to go serve in the military. Doesn't mean they have to be a you know first responder or have to go be a you know public servant, but it means wherever you're planted, whatever the passion is God's given you, if you make music, do it the best that you can. If you do movies or you're in the pulpit or whatever, do it the best you can, but do it with with purpose and actually recognize you're part of of the greatest nation in history. And you've got a you've got a challenge ahead of you to preserve this thing. And 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 I would say that Patriot Academy is just a small piece of the of the big picture. I hate to sound like you know, no, I don't. I like Churchill. I sound just like Churchill. We had to fight them on the beaches. We had to fight them everywhere. There's no place. There's no no part of the American culture at this point where there's not a war going on, where the Marxists have not yeah. stepped into. They are, they're smart. I mean, I, I, I have to give them credit. They've been at it yeah. for 80 years in the trenches, scratching and clawing to turn this nation into a Marxist hellhole. And, and, and they have taken ground. They have taken significant ground. And so we cannot leave anything off limits, which is why when a Patriot Academy kid comes to our program, I don't say, hey, go run for office. I, I, I say, let's find out what the desire is God's put in your heart. And it may be that you're going to make music and be like an Aaron Lewis and write a song like, am I the only one that's going to wake up Americans to realize they need to fight? It may be that you're going to go make movies. You're going to go into the pulpit or business or politics, whatever it is. But, man, you got to go in with a mission oriented. I'm going to spend the next 50 years of my life turning this thing around. So, yeah. so Rick, mm -hmm. Paul, Paul from Minnesota asked a great question in chat. What does... Uh, what does fully awake in the great awakening look like? Hmm. How do Man. we make that happen? And what does it look like? How do we know, you know, we look to look, look to our left, look to our right. And, you know, we, we want to have soldiers there. We want to have people we know 
are capable and are committed, um, what does it look like? How do we even recognize that? Well, I think Thomas Paine helped us with this a lot. You know, freedom, you know, such a celestial item that heaven puts a price on it. And I think if people aren't willing to sacrifice, they aren't they don't fully realize how bad this is and, and how important it is. You know, I, I was at a dinner. Man, it's been almost two years now. And um, Rick Santorum was speaking, a, a former U.S. senator from Pennsylvania. And he's he looks out at us. And this is Sean. It's basically a room full of, of us. Right. And people that are in media or, or they're they're doing something out there to try to turn this thing around. Packed house. And he looks at us and he goes, whatever you're doing, it's not enough. Nobody in this room is sacrificing. Everybody in here's got it pretty easy. And I'm sitting there getting hacked off. I'm like, dude, you have no idea, man. I was like, you know, 100 live events last year, 700 media hits. I'm missing time with my grandkids. I'm all over the, you know, I'm doing all. And I'm thinking, this guy, had, I, I was actually mad at him for saying it. <laughs> and, then, and then he starts saying stuff you and I say all the time, right? I mean, we know the stories of the sacrifice of the founding fathers, but he, he starts going through some of that. And I realized, man, he's right. He's right. Mm -hmm. I, I moan and, and complain if I don't get my upgrade to first class for free, you know, and, and I got a flying cut. George Whitfield rode a horse up and down the coast of this country and and, and preached 17,000 sermons here uh, to lay the seeds for which our nation was, you know, built upon. And I'm whining because wow. I don't get first class. I mean, listen, we got it so easy. We don't know what sacrifice is. So I think if somebody's truly awake today. They're sacrificing. They're giving up the golf game. They're selling the, the rental house and donating to candidates and causes. They're helping organizations like Patriot Academy or Wall Builders or, or whatever it might be, make that next level step of, of investment in, in the country. They're they're taking the time to run for office. You know, it's a, it's a pain to run. People think running for office is this glamorous, you know, thing. Yeah. You go serve on a school board or a city council or even state legislature, you're sacrificing to do that. In Texas, you don't get paid squat. I nearly went broke being a legislator. I mean, I just think it's it's measured by sacrifice, lives, fortune, sacred honor. Are they giving of their time, giving of their money? Are they willing to say what's true, regardless of what's who's going to cancel them or or what you know what that what that's going to look like? You know, letting the chips fall where they may. So for me, that's that's the measurement. Are they all in or not? I'm Amen. like Sam Adams, man. Sam Adams said, if you don't, if you're not willing to do this stuff, he he said it this way. He said, crouch down and lick the hand that feeds you, and may we never remember you were our countrymen. I'm just tired of messing around, man. I'm not looking for sheep. I'm looking for fellow lions. And uh, if they're not if they're not all in, man, I don't, I don't think they're fully awakened to this. Kip, uh, Kip Shillam, uh, who is a great contributor to this show and to Two Witnesses Live, absolutely an amazing mind, um, says that the word says we're to occupy until he comes and to work until he comes. And so many, you know, I see churches and I've gotten to, speak in a bazillion churches and i know you speak in churches you know every week and i you know what I, I wrote a book and it was uh it was not well received by a lot of pastors and um i like that when book. I'm, oh thank you yeah i appreciate that <laughs> so <clears throat> and it deals with um it, it's entitled excellence killed the church how mediocrity destroyed america yeah. And in the modern church, I see in the modern church, and, and this is nothing against, you know, studly preachers who wear jeans, and, and, I'm, and I'm for that. Look, if I could pull off skinny jeans, I would. Um, I mean, if I could get them on, I, I would put them, I would. I'd look, I don't know if I, I probably wouldn't know. No, I don't look, I wouldn't look good. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah. So everyone that the vomit has up in the throat, just, you're okay. I'm not going to complete that image for you. But uh, so I, I talked a lot about pastors who are just afraid, you know, they they want to keep their job. It's a hard yeah. job. It's a hard job. It's it's risky because you got a lot of people that they could get hacked off at you over one word, just like our listeners. You know, this this channel has almost 16,000. How old is this? Two months old, this channel? Uh, 16,000. Three, three months. Around three months old. 16,000 subscribers. Some of their videos have over 300,000 views. And, but, you know, one thing I've always said is, is that you may say one thing and it may be completely true and someone will hear it. It'll hit them 
wrong, it'll offend some sense sensitivity that they have. And despite standing up and saying, hey, I'm, you know, I'm tough. I'm in the battle. I'm, I'm a warrior, a uh, warrior for Christ, a uh, warrior for freedom, warrior for liberty. They will first they'll attack and then they'll fade away. The problem is pastors in the church, not my pastor, my pastor is amazing, but a lot of pastors are terrified of losing their job. They're terrified of losing their security because it's so uh, tenuous in a church. You have, however big the church is, that's how many bosses you have. And there They're used to be a time. Average, but yeah. <clears throat> Say again. They're hirelings instead of shepherds, but yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so I see in the church, I see a lot of people that are afraid. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to talk about, um, and our pastor at Grace Community Topsoil, he's not afraid. Steve will talk yeah. about politics. He will stand strong and firm. And all six foot five of them, he'll be standing up straight and tall. And he'll say, this is what we believe here. You don't have to believe it, but this is what we believe. And, um, and you know, pastors are terrified of having the 501c3 taken away. And I know you've talked about that. You know, it, it doesn't happen. It's not happening. These people that, that, that they say, oh, no, we as a church, we can't speak out about this or that because that's politics. They'll take away our 501c3. And I will say this. Um, that's why whenever I go to churches, I take a love offering. It's, you know, if they if they have it, if they don't have it, and if, as long as I can get there and get home. But the government has no business in the church. And I think that's part of the problem. Some of your speeches, you talk about that, um, how we cede power to the government when they don't have that power. But it mm -hmm. becomes a perceived power. And then we imbue them with the power when we don't do anything when they abuse the power. Well, I think I think the problem lies with some of these churches that maybe you're referencing is that they have their faith is lacking because if you really understand God is in full control, you don't worry about what the government's going to do or how you're going to be attacked or how you're going to be canceled because it's in God's hands. As long as you're mm -hmm. delivering that message and and following, you know, your heart and speaking the truth, you shouldn't be worrying about being canceled. Because ultimately, God's in control. Yeah, you, yeah, I you, agree. You hit on a big one right there because that's that's essentially the message Eric Metaxas has right now for the church and for yeah. the country. His letter to the American Church is, I think, one of the most important books of our lifetime. And and the documentary that that uh, Rachel and Simone made about the book is, is just phenomenal. Um, and he says exactly what you just said. And, and he actually says it even even <laughs> he goes a little further and basically says you have no faith. You're not. Yeah, if you're not willing to speak truth, then you have no faith. If you truly believe what we say we believe, you would not be um, hesitant to, to speak that truth. And it's for all the reasons you're saying, Sean. It's also just they've been lied to. They've been taught in the seminaries yeah. that, that politics is not supposed to be in the pulpit. And I always say, well, what, what is politics? I mean, Charles Finney back in the Second Great Awakening said that if, 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 if politics is corrupted, the pulpit's responsible for it. If, if, if journalism and, and entertainment and all these things are corrupted, the pulpit is responsible for it. He basically brings everything back to the pulpit and says, if the church is not being salt and light, you know, if the salt's not in the meat, why, why would we shock that the meat's spoiling? Well, the American meat is spoiling right now. The culture is falling apart because the salt has been kept in the shaker and the church has not done its job. And so to the listener or viewer that, that said that, we're supposed to occupy until he returns. We often forget that that when Jesus said, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's and unto God what is God's, he's saying that in the Roman Empire, very different from America. So your job, your role, your, your duty as a Christian citizen in that country was very different than here. Here in America, you don't have a choice. You're, you are Caesar. You are in charge. We, the people, are ultimately responsible for what our government looks like. And for the church to be silent in the face of evil, as Bonhoeffer said, uh, that is evil itself. We have the answers. We have the, the the cure for what ails this nation, and to not go out and speak to that, and for for people to say to me, "Oh, we're just supposed to preach the gospel," and I'm like, "Wait a minute, the gospel is not to get somebody to walk the aisle and give their life to Christ. The gospel is, according to Jesus, not according to me or any of you guys, to make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. That's the great commission. And when Absolutely. we just give 
gospel state, you know, you get to go to heaven now. Here's your get out of out of hell free card. And then and then we don't tell them how to apply that or live that in, in here. And Jesus had a lot to say about politics. The Bible has a lot to say about politics. Politics, as Charles Finney said, here's the direct quote. Politics is part of a religion in a country such as this. And Christians must do their duty to their country as a part of their duty to God. God will bless or curse the nation according to the course Christians take in politics. He's basically saying it's no different. I mean, politics is no different than work. And, and and home and, and, and school and everything. It's just part of our religion because the Lord is Lord over all of our life. And therefore, we leave nothing off the table. And we've been given this great instruction manual, guys. This is this is the answer book for everything in life. You would never leave a good sermon. If if uh, if Sean gets up and preaches on how to be a good husband, a good a good wife, a good mother, a good father, you wouldn't drive away from that service where he's spoken and go, man, that was a great sermon. I wish I could use it tomorrow uh, at home, but you know, separation of, of home and church. I mean, nobody would do that, but we Absolutely do that. No. How do you treat your neighbor? And last thing I know I'm filibustering here, but politics <laughs> is nothing more than how do you treat your neighbor? And so for these yeah. people that say, I don't want Christianity influencing what's going on in the world. Wouldn't you like to live in a country in a neighborhood where everybody's treating each other the way they want to be treated? I think that's written down somewhere. Uh, yeah. It's probably a good idea, and it, it actually would create a good society. That's why even the non-Christian founding fathers, which there's only about 10 of them out of 250, but even they said Christianity makes the best citizens. So even though they didn't believe Jesus to be God, they still knew that the Bible made people treat each other well, made people obey the law and do things right and not steal, and you could do business deals and and relationships and, and, and trust that there would be um, you know, that there would be fairness and that you would live up to your word. Last thing I said, that was the last thing, but one more thing, because I'm I'm mad about this one, especially we talked about the Naval Academy. Blind justice, equal justice, treating each other the same under the law, neither Jew nor Greek, rich and poor, treated the same in the courtroom. The fact that our Supreme Court would still say that it's OK at the military academies of this country to have a standard that is different based on the color of your skin is spitting on the grave of, grave of MLK. It's treating people based on the color of skin rather than on the content of their character. It is wrong. It is evil. It's at the heart of Marxism. It's got to change. We've got to get to biblical justice, not social justice. Biblical Amen. justice is blind justice, equal justice. We're all treated the same. Social justice said which, says which church do you go to? What color is your skin? Which political affiliation do you have? Are you rich or poor? And all those things matter, not what you actually did. And a free society won't last under that. Amen. So three wow. steps. Three steps. What do you think? Three things people can do. Yeah. Um, anybody can do. Look, you might not be able to do 10 things, but you can do three things. What are three things that the, the listener listening right now and the people that will listen a week from now, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, what, what can they do? What do you recommend their steps be? Man, if I, could give, if I could give you three general things, and then I'll give you a couple of specifics. But the three things are, and I sat in a war room with Kirk Cameron all day trying to figure out how to describe this, and we, this is what we came up with. Number one, saturate yourself in, in God's Word. Okay, everybody, I don't care if you're Christian or yep. not, it's just wisdom, man. Proverbs has more wisdom for life than anything else. Benjamin Rush, signer de the Declaration, one of our most important founding fathers, says the Bible has more about the brain and the body and how things work than any any other book. So saturate yourself in, in truth, and then build community, man. When none of us can live alone, this is a we're in a. I would be so depressed, Sean, if I couldn't get around guys like you all the time like this. This iron sharpening hour we're doing right now, it's what keeps mm -hmm. me going. Build mm -hmm. community, find people. That, that share your values and that you can sharpen the countenance of and that you can be in this thing together. And then third, tend the garden. Take care of wherever God's planted you. Go take over that local school board. Take over that city council. Go 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 be a voice of reason in your church. Tend the garden. where you, And maybe it's just your kids. Maybe you just spend all your time raising up a generation in your home that gets this stuff. So it's saturate in truth, build community, and tend the garden. And, and the specific I'll give you, and, and now this part is going to sound selfish, but we give this away for free, so I'm not getting any money out of this. Do a constitution class in your home or your church or wherever you want to, and that will help you build community. You'll be studying what, what you mentioned earlier, our biblical citizenship class. It basically says, what's the Bible say about how to treat your neighbor? How do you do, do a biblical citizenship thing? And then how do you do it in this country? How do you do it under our constitution 
properly, peacefully? How do you how do you properly do this thing? So if you'll do that class for free, go be a constitution coach, sign up at our website. It's free. I can promise you 7,000 classes later, a million people going through the classes. We're now at 28,000 constitution coaches. With all of that, I can tell you with absolute certainty, you will get wisdom, you'll build community, and you'll get the tools you need to tend the garden. Oh, that's awesome. That's even better than I thought I was going to get, which is what you always deliver. Listen, I know you got to pop smoke because you're a busy guy. Before you go, I want to say, please pass along my congratulations to you know who and you know who and Kara and you for number four on the way. Uh, I'm so excited. I can't stand it. I got my first grandchild in, in August and I'm losing my mind. I'm telling <laughs> you. It's the best job on the planet, man. Now, I love being a dad, but being grandpa, oh my gosh! It, it, Zig Ziglar used to always say, "If we had known how much being grand, how fun grandparents them first. was going to be, would have you know t- uh, treated their parents better." Um, but but I enjoyed being a dad as well, so I think we treated their parents pretty pretty well. But uh, man, you're right, grandpa is the best job on the planet. What are your kids up to? Bring me up to speed. You know, we got them all in the in the family business, if you will. Uh, they're they're all part of the ministry now. So so Trey runs all the all the firearms training and constitutional defense and and uh, you've got to smile when you hear that because you remember taking him at 16 years old, 17 <laughs> years old to the Naval Academy. Uh, Reagan and his wife Faith are also so it's Tr- Trey and Andrew have, and of course you know Andrew and her whole family up there. They've got three kiddos now, and uh, and so Reagan does all of our um, media and still produces. Wow. He produced Biblical Citizenship. And then Cameron's writing kids books. We got a bunch of kids books coming out that are going to make it fun for little children to learn patriotism. And then, uh, and then Rhett is actually the producer of my show, The Tavern. That's why I got this big Viking mug right here. I do this in this set. It's um, basically revolutionary strategies and tactics for how to save the country. And awesome. uh, and we're all moving to Fredericksburg, man. We're we're building this campus in Fredericksburg. I'm still in Dripping Springs, but we're selling our place and. We're going west, young man. We're too close oh. to Austin. I got to get out of. We're just west of Weird right now, and I'm. I, I, get- I, I was wondering. <laughs> I was wondering. Hey, let me say this. Um, you know, Christopher runs um, a a place. I won't say the name because I don't know if I'm allowed. But um, in Kennesaw, Georgia, it's it's a hundred thousand square feet of freedom, Ooh. and there's a place there. I bet you we could fill that joint. Um, we, we could. He's. Tens of thousands of people he's had in there uh, oh, for different rallies and stuff. Yeah. So love to have you go to Kennesaw, Georgia and light them up. And I'll Dude, I'll find a way that. to get there. I just, where, where, what part of Georgia is that in? Where, where, is that North Atlanta? Uh, about yeah, North an hour, hour and a half south of Tennessee on 75. Yeah. Our facility is phenomenal. We, we I can't go into too much detail, but we, we do a lot of uh, firearms training and uh, a lot of uh, involvement with local law enforcement nice. we have a it's a members only facility that's absolutely phenomenal with restaurants and lounge and uh, a retail establishment area uh, we have oh, we man. hold live concerts every uh, every other week we have one coming this friday with john barry it's uh, a lot of the stuff we do is uh, promotional work for donations and charity and we're highly involved with law enforcement and helping them as well. It's uh, it's owned by um, two Christians that are just fantastic people, husband and wife, that really are just phenomenal people, just phenomenal that people. Like Constitution heaven to me, brother. It is. I yeah, it is. To come. I just got back from St. Simon, Georgia, and uh, and we're we're going to do a lot in Georgia this year. Of course, twenty twenty four huge, and it's one of the target states. But uh, man, I'd love to come out there and do something. Maybe we could do a. Maybe I bring Brad and we do a comedy and constitution and and uh, and just have a good time. That would be that sounds awesome. You would yeah. love you would love it here. The, the the town of Kennesaw is one of the few towns in the country where it's a law for the homeowners to own a firearm. Nice. They have very little crime. Just about everybody walks around with a gun on their hip like the Wild West. And right. uh, bad people just tend to not come to our city. I so, love nice. it. Yeah. Yes. That's a done Your deal. Kind of place, brother. Right. Let's find a date, man. That sounds awesome. That's awesome. Hey, We'd man, love to have I can't you. thank you enough. Oh, you bet. We'll make that happen. I'll talk to you offline, yeah. and, and I'll okay. we'll link uh, Christopher. Christopher, I think you have his 
I'll send that to you. But uh, yeah. anyway, listen, we love what you do. We appreciate it so much. Yeah. I appreciate you giving us those three things um, really that any, everybody should be doing, but, but can do. And uh, we are, we are just so appreciative of your time. I know you're taking time away from your family. Please give my love to, from Kara on down, tell them that I miss them. I can't wait to see them again. I love you, brother. And uh, you mean the world to me. Well, right back at you, and good to meet you other guys. And, uh, man, I'm looking forward to coming out and spending some time with you all. That'd be great. Yeah, real pleasure. Fantastic. Thanks for joining us. You bet. God bless you all. All God bless bless you. you. Thanks for watching the segment from our live show. We're live every night, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, except for the Sabbath. See you tomorrow.